Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Spice Vader. Today I've got a little holiday 2024 build. Uh, this is a build that my coworker wanted to do. He wants to build a machine that can handle the new Stalker 2 game. And I said, yeah, I can help you out with that. So we have a little budget here of about $27.50. And these are the components he chose. So we've got the Asus Prime X870P Wi-Fi motherboard because he lives in an apartment, he wanted Wi-Fi. We have the Ryzen 9 7950X3D. We were initially gonna go with the 9800X3D, but it is not in stock November 2024 here, so. And then the two, two terabyte Crucial P3 Plus uh, SSDs that just fell over here. So we have four terabytes of storage, uh, Noctua NHD15 Chromax Black, we have 64 gigs of DDR5 6400 Trident Z5 RGB, as well as a 7900 XTX, 24 gigs of VRAM, and a 1000 watt Corsair RM1000E power supply. And the Fractal North XL case is what we're gonna stuff all these components into. Let's get it unboxed here. Ooh, this is already looking good. Hey, oh, come on. <clears throat> it's a beautiful, elegant design. Plenty of room inside of it to do our work. Uh, what we're planning to do today is install all these components, and then we're gonna run some benchmarks. We're gonna run a few games, especially Stalker 2, see how that runs. We're gonna check the cooling. We're just gonna use the three included fans here. We're not adding any additional fans. Um, and then we're, yeah, we're gonna check thermals and then we're going to run some benchmarks and see how it does. Cinebench, uh, I'll do my DaVinci Resolve test and we'll just see how this all works out. So let's get started. All right, let's get to this build. So first things first, let's take a look. We got our tools here. I got my iFixit toolkit here, my big screwdriver, my Leatherman, my utility knife. So let's open up this case first to see what we're working with. Now my uh, coworker didn't really necessarily want to go for a flashy build. He wanted an airflow focused build in something nice and new. Oh, this is captive screws. So that's good. I mean, that's what you'd expect. Nice reinforced structure in here, so that's good. Does this peel need to come off? Or does this stay on? I think this comes off. Let's take it off. Okay. We have a vertical mount here for an AIO we could put in here. Uh, we're not gonna be running an AIO because he wants to do only air cooling, and I agree with him. Some of you may have seen Greg Salazar's latest video of troubleshooting a computer that was roughly five, six years old, and the AIO gummed up in there and was causing a CPU that's relatively, you know, normal spec, nothing crazy, and 90 degrees Celsius just in the bio. So we want no liquid cooling. Case has a lot of nice features. Could do EATX, can do all the way to mini ITX, although I don't know why you'd do that in this case. Let's just take off all the side panels because we're gonna need to get back in here anyway. This has some nice cable management already and kind of a little fan header here, or fan hub I should say. So that's kind of cool. Uh, hard drive trays down here, two hard drive trays and a baggie of screws. Sorry for my voice, I'm a little bit under the weather right now. I'm trying my best, but uh, I probably will sound a little different in this video. Oh, that's a big silica gel packet. Nice. Do not eat, throw away. How about do not throw away? And we'll just leave it at that. Fractal North XL accessories. Mounting screws, mounting screws, power supply screws, motherboard standoffs. It's got three in the box, so it should have a bunch already. We got our headers, so we got USB-C and USB-3. Yes, we just have one Type-C port, so that works out well because this motherboard only has one USB-C header on it. X870P Wi-Fi, pre-mounted I.O. shield. Um, it's kind of got a nice white-black uh, accents on it and USB 4 support. Those such as Paul's hardware will say that the X870s probably aren't the greatest. They're similar to the B650s. Uh, 
However, these do have PCIe 5 support on the PCIe X16 uh, slot. So, you know, those B650s, unless you got in B650E, wouldn't have PCIe 5. This has all the AuraSync RGB stuff, none of which we're care to use. We're gonna care to use, but we can basically go right to installing the motherboard first since IO Shield is on. We shouldn't forget about that. There's our, it's got Wi-Fi 7 as well, so that's nice. This board was about 250, uh, if I recall. Um, I'll throw up the, the PC part picker list on screen so you can investigate. I'll throw the link down in the description too in case you want to build something similar. Um, this is a very nice case, yeah, I like it. So the motherboard, here it is, it's got two nicely covered M.2 slots here. Let's stick the um, SSDs in real quick. There's one. Oh, they even come with a screw. Just going to pop these M.2s off and we're gonna put the drives in real quick. They've got this neat little uh, thing on here. I'm trying to figure out if these if this is something I could just spin around to keep the M.2 in place. I think, okay, so you put this in. That's how it works. You just pull back on it. Good grief. So now we could take this off, put this on here. This one doesn't have those cool things, but it's still gonna be secured with the screws, so. And two. Okay, M.2s are installed. That was the easy part. That's nice. That takes three. Okay, so the final steps, I did some um, cable management here. So I ran the wiring, put in the power supply, and everything except for the GPU is hooked up now. It is the ASRock. 7900 XTX 24 gigs VRAM beast. This is a pretty sweet GPU. So let's do the peel. I got a little peel here. I think there's one here. Yep. And there's a peel on the back plate. So take all that off. And um, first of all, we'll take off the PCIe slot cover and all the peels are done. Let's put the GPU in. There, there is, looks like there might be a tiny bit of sag. Might need a GPU bracket of some sorts over here. I like to use one just because of the weight of these cards. That's the GPU mounted and installed. We just have to run the wire. And I see there's this nice little release here. If you need to pop it out, that'll come in handy.
Okay. Finally. And that's the build. Let's fire it up and see what it does. Do I need to turn the power switch on? Yes, I do. Now let's fire it up. That's a good sign. We got RGB RAM, RGB GPU. Hey, look at that. And we get a screen and we get the BIOS. I am gonna cheat a little bit. I did already pop in here once and set DOCP, so that's why the RAM is showing. But that's all I did. It is booting, it's working. We get to the BIOS, let's install Windows, and let's see how things run. Run through the usual install of programs like DaVinci Resolve, CPU-Z, and GPU-Z. Uh, we got our 7950X3D showing up. The 7900XTX shows up with all 24 gigs of VRAM, 64 gigs of system RAM, running all at the right speeds, and the processor is hitting its targets. Uh, temperatures are looking good so far. So let's do some tests. Okay, let's load up Stalker 2. So we got about 65 FPS, not too bad, 388 watts. This is with everything maxed out, so, and I don't think it's doing any resolution scaling or anything like that. TSR is not resolution scaling, so there is FSR and XESS available. Let's try FSR. So we're at 4K balanced FSR and we're at 74, 75 FPS. This is how I would play it right here. Yeah, that's decent. Wait, do I jump in this? Uh, for reference, I'm gonna do some 1080p just to see how it handles that. Anyway, here's 1080p with FSR on balanced uh, with the, is it epic quality settings? Yep, epic settings. But yeah, 96 FPS. Now let's turn FSR off. Just back to TSR. Okay. And our FPS drops to about 87, 85. I mean, 1080p, that's quite a difference anyway. It doesn't look too bad between the two uh, resolutions. It still looks like, uh, it just looks like things are a little more jaggy, a little more aliased. There we go, that's been Stalker 2. Okay, so we have no resolution scaling, and our graphics are set to extreme. And this is at 4K, this looks great. 158 FPS. CPUs at 51 Celsius, GPUs at 56. This is nothing for it. Yeah, you could play this on a 4K 120, no problem. Max settings. Now let's set it to 1080p. Uh, still no FSR. And we're gonna also use the extreme preset. 215 FPS. That's pretty good. That's really good. Yeah, this system is in real good shape. Uh, my coworker is going to be running mostly 1080p for now until he gets a better monitor, so this will do just fine. Awesome. Let's move on to the next game. 4K. There we go. We got ray tracing. I usually turn on the thing, the, the stats. We're just going to leave the AMD one up. 170. This is... Ultra Nightmare, 4K, no resolution scaling, no DLSS, obviously, because it's an AMD card. Okay, and I died. So there we go. That's Doom Eternal 4K.
All right, let's do 1080p Ultra Nightmare, ray tracing on, and still no resolution scaling. 315 FPS, that's even better. This system is just um, well overmatched for this game. Yeah. And I died again, so that's been Doom Eternal. And now for our last test, I'm only able to do four games because I just don't have time to do more. But these are all pretty high-end, demanding games, so. Ray Tracing Ultra with FSR uh, on auto. 70 FPS. That's not bad at all. Because this game really takes a lot to run. Uh, let's do... Let's do quality. I usually bring this to about 0.8. Okay, so FSR quality... It's about 47, 49 FPS. This is ray tracing on, you know, it's RT Ultra, so it's... AMD GPUs just don't do as well with ray tracing. That's just the fact of the matter. However, this is a pretty decent effort from the AMD card. And one last test here. Let's just turn off FSR completely. This is RT Ultra. This is just native rendering now. Yeah, you need some FSR. We're at 24 FPS. And just for the sake of finality, let's do FSR quality uh, 1080p and just see how this does. And it looks like we're getting about 108 FPS, which is pretty decent. Uh, let's see if we can change this to uh, just RT Ultra with no FSR. And that drops down to about 75 FPS. So still playable if you wanted to play it without any resolution scaling. But it won't look as good. i just play it at 4K if I were you. Thirty-four eight fifty-nine. That's pretty good. Nineteen twenty-seven. Not bad. Okay, it finished up. Fifty-three minutes and forty-nine seconds. Okay, looks like it's just about to finish up here. Check the temps. Sixty degrees Celsius. Not bad. Yeah, I can barely hear it working here. It's not overheating at all. There's a warm eminence, but definitely not overheating. Okay, so 29 minutes for the AV1 encode and 23 seconds. 29, 23 is the final time on that. All right, test is complete. And looks like we're looking at five gigabytes per second here. Uh, the write is just slightly slower, but really good speeds here. And I believe that concludes all the tests that I wanted to run. So that'll wrap up the video for today. Uh, this is the completed build of the 7950 X3D 7900 XTX Fractal North XL case build for my coworker. We're going to call this the Stalker 2 build since that's what he really wanted this for. So. Um, yeah, looks like it's gonna work good. The only thing left to do is to hand it off to my coworker, let him use it and try it out, see what he thinks. Um, but yes, that's it. That's all I got for today. So uh, if you like this content, be sure to hit like and subscribe if you wanna see more of this. And um, I guess we'll just see you in the next one. Have yourself a Merry Christmas. Till next time, God bless, take care.